So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, uh, depending on from which place you have joined this webinar. Uh, if you are looking for financial post data migration, how to avoid pitfalls, uh, you are at the right place. Uh, there are people joining, so just let's give them one more minute and we will start. Uh, again, welcome you all to this webinar. Thanks for joining it. And uh, what we would be discussing in this webinar would be how to avoid pitfalls if you are doing financial post data migration. So we will be going through seven pitfalls and how you can actually avoid them uh, easily by following certain steps. Now, before we start, I just want to launch a quick poll to understand on like which stage of migration are you in, in terms of data migration? So let me quickly launch this poll. So it asks, which stage of data migration are you in? Are you in the middle of a migration or you are planning to migrate in near future or you don't have any plans to migrate? Okay. I think we have got results. That's good. Let's give another 10 more seconds for people to fill in it. Okay. So let's end this poll. So almost 100% of uh, you have said that you are actually planning to migrate in near future. So that is, that is good to know because then I think if you're planning to migrate in future, uh, this webinar will actually help you in uh, avoiding those pitfalls and uh, you can actually uh, see like what steps you can take to uh, avoid these pitfalls. So let's get started. Now, before we go to the pitfalls, let's uh, understand the three data migration misconceptions that everyone has. So the first misconception is that direct migration to the live system is faster, right? So you have data migration that you need to transfer from financial force to another system or from another system to financial force. You do that, do that thing directly in live because migrating data is copying data, okay? So you just have to copy data from one system to another uh, on the live system and it's a one-time activity, right? So that is a very common misconceptions or three misconceptions everyone has about data migration. That data migration to live system is faster. Migration is nothing but just copying of data and data is data that they are mi migrating is all good. There is nothing bad about it. All records are correct. There are no missing records. Uh, there are no inconsistent records and the data they are migrating is ready to be transported to another system uh, without any checks, right? So these are the three misconceptions that most of the people have about data migration. So moving ahead, let's see what are the different pitfalls uh, that can be avoided in data migration. So most of us, as we think is, data migration is just a push of a button, right? And uh, there are, predefined mappings between two systems. So as soon as you say export and import uh, and you click on the button, the data will migrate instantly from one system to another and you don't have to do any kind of mappings within the source system or the targeted system, okay? But let me tell you, data migration is a, a much more complex task than this. Right, it's a com complex activity that has to be handled carefully and it needs a separate project plan, a budget and a solution approach on how to do it right from the start till the end, right? So you, you need to have weekly deadlines to ensure that your plan is on track, uh, you are migrating data correctly and there are no surprises at the end, okay? So if you want to actually do it carefully, always create a separate project plan for data migration, right? And when I say project plan, it should be something like this, right? This is the data migration framework you should be using when you are migrating data, either from financial force to some other system or from 
any other system into financial flows. Okay, so it has uh, six stages that you need to go through. Okay. And if your internal team is doing it well and good, they should also have this framework. If you hire an external consultant who is actually doing it well and good, they should also be on the same guidelines. So first and foremost is governance, right? Where, so governance is a stage where you see and identify stakeholders and key team members who are going to be the key members for your entire data migration process. Now those stakeholders can be your business users. Those stakeholders can be teams from different businesses, from maybe marketing team, from sales team, uh, from accounting team, whatever team is there, right? And you have to set the goals on what you are trying to achieve through this data migration. So that should be set. Then before you are actually trying to migrate the data from one system to another, try to classify the data, understand your data, okay? So all data does not need to be transferred from one system to another. There should be certain data which is not required and you don't need to transfer it. You can purge that data, archive that data and only transfer the data which you think is required to be transferred, okay? So, and that can only be possible if you have uh, your governance done and you have got your business uh, stakeholders who are actually going to tell you that this is something that I need for my migrated system. This is something I don't require. Okay. And since you are uh, doing it in financial posts, uh, the team who is actually a part of that data migration process should very well understand the object nature and limitation, right? If there are any customizations that you have done within your database, right, they, they have to be taken care of. So first is governance. Second is that you have to understand your financial post data, right? Then obviously, since you are migrating data, you have to prepare data at both the source and end the destination end, okay? So export data from data from existing system and consolidate it. And before, before you are actually migrating the data, it's very, very important to clean the data from the source system. It might be that there are several records which are missing from your existing source system. There may be inconsistent records. There may be uh, records which have uh, uh, which are invalid, okay? So you need to identify those records first and then transfer them from the source system to the uh, target system. If you don't do that, what will happen is all those bad records, all those missing records will ultimately get transferred to the trans sources, uh, to the target system. And then you are facing double problem because you have got bad data in the source system and you've got bad data in the target system. And once the system goes live, you will have numerous issues where you are pulling in reports and you're getting wrong data because you have not taken care of data cleanism before migration. So very, very important to understand data, uh, clean it and do a proper field mapping, okay? Uh, contact field may be something different in the target system, right? So field mapping has to be accurate. Then once you have done your data, prepared your data, okay? Test that data in the migration process, right? So we always suggest that don't do uh, data migration as a big bank, okay? So don't do all the records migration in one go, divide them in phases, follow a stepwise process so that uh, once you have done, maybe you are, your system needs like 100,000 records to be migrated from your source system to the target system. So divide them in chunks. Step one should be write scripts, migration scripts, uh, do field mapping, do data cleansing, and migrate just maybe 1,000 records from source system to target system and ask the business users to test them out, okay? If they say that the data is correct, then move to the next step and migrate the next set of data. Otherwise, just correct the scripts uh, of those 1,000 records if there is any problem with it. What will happen then is, you are saving yourself from a bigger disaster, right? So 
keep on uh, following baby steps when you're doing data migration. Divide that into phases, okay? Don't do a big bang data migration that this is done. I have migrated 100,000 records in one go, and now it's up to the users to test it out, and then I will fix them. It will create a great amount of problem, okay? So do that in phases, and it would be easy for the business users to test 1,000 records rather than testing all the 100,000 records in one go, okay? Then obviously, once you have migrated, validate that data, uh, whether it's in sandbox or whether it's in production, and never ever do a direct migration from one live system to another. Make a sandbox environment, do the migration first in sandbox, get it tested from your business users, and then only move to production. Because your production is something which is impacting your live users, so you don't want to mess it up, okay? So try on a testing environment before moving it to live. And then obviously make sure that any triggers or any kind of workflows that you have disabled in the pre-migration process, you do that, you enable them in the post-migration activities, okay? So this is a basic framework that everyone of us should be using when we are using and this, this framework is applicable for any data migration now you are doing. It's not just specifically for financial force. It can be for Salesforce. It can be for your accounting system, for any other system. Okay. Now, I think when we discussed the last slide, we talked about uh, stakeholders involving them at an early stage. Okay. So your business people are the ones who truly understand the data. Right, And therefore, they are the ones who can decide what needs to be transferred and what does not need to be transferred. It is, it is not that that whole data has to be migrated from one system to another, okay? You should talk to your users. It may be that there are historical data, legacy data, which they might not be using for several years, and they don't require that to be uh, migrated to another system. And since you have not talked to your business users, you foolishly just migrate everything from the source system to the target system. So that would be a waste of effort on your side. And the data that is not useful for your business, you have just migrated it to the uh, target system, increased your effort and created more problems. So ask the business team right, right from the start that what data has to be thrown away what data has to be kept and migrated, okay? And even if uh, your data migration mapping is reviewed and approved by the business team, right? Once the data moves into the new UI, right? They may have issues, okay? So they may say that this thing is missing. So it's always better to involve them at every stage of your migration. Start testing data along with the business team at every step, okay? So the biggest problem based on our experience is the data migration, the data migration technical team does not involve the business because obviously they are busy people, they don't have time. Uh, you go to them, uh, they will not tell you things, but keep that thing in mind that without their approval, without understanding what they want to migrate, without getting the mapping reviewed from them, never move ahead. Even if it would take two months, that's fine. Otherwise it would be a waste of effort on your side, right? Get them in a, into a room, take their uh, approvals on the mappings, take their approval on what data needs to be migrated and then only move ahead. So this is pitfall two. And what you need to do, obviously create business requirements, timelines and targeted weekly goals. Ask your business users, within the data migration process on what is working, what is not working, and what changes you need to make in these scripts when they are testing it. Encourage the staff or the business users who are actually testing the system to put in their comments and suggestions, right? It's always good to show them uh, things in parts and get their approval so that when you move that to live, they don't have any last time surprises, okay? And break data silos to avoid isolated teams halting the project in its tracks. If you take everyone together and start your journey together along with a collaborative effort, 
right? Everyone will be in sync. There will be no last minute surprises and your live migration will be a success. I, I'm not saying that you will not have issues in post migration, right? But you will have limited issues. And since everyone is in sync, they are expecting those issues, right? And since you have got that kind of bonding, uh, obviously it is always helpful right from the start till the beginning, okay? So data migration is not a one team effort. It is everyone's collaborative effort that makes it successful. So the pitfall three is we underestimate data migration. As I said, everyone thinks that data migration is a copying process. You copy the data from the live system to another live system without doing any proper mappings, without data cleansing, right? But so don't underestimate the complexity. Data migration can be a complex process and you may not realize it's a complex process. And once you start doing it, you will have time consuming tasks that you might not be seeing at the start of the project. So always analyze on what needs to be done before moving ahead. Okay, so estimate realistically. Understand the source data and you have to make sure that uh, the source data is analyzed by the analysts who know them best. Okay, they will tell you what needs to be migrated, what needs to be purged, what needs to be archived, what is not required. Okay, so take, take an approval from them. Calculate the estimation based on the number of fields to be transferred from a source system to a target system, right? So estimations are always done, not on the basis of the number of records, obviously that is one of the criteria, but also on the number of fields to be transferred, right? There may be just two fields, but there may be n number of fields, right? So make sure that you estimate, and this can only be done if you analyze the data structure before migration, okay? You have to understand the data structure of the source system, you have to understand the data structure of the target system, and then depending on the data structures, you will get how many fields are there, how they are mapped, and then it will lead to a good estimation or a right estimation. Every stage needs some time for every field, like understanding fields and mapping the source field to the target field, right? So take data migration seriously, estimate it realistically, make a plan, and then move forward. Now pitfall four is obviously, as, as I said, we all assume that all data that is there in the source system is good. There is nothing, there is no problem with it. But we, we should realize that it's not the case. Okay, new systems have new rules and the legacy data might have problems. So as an example, contact email can be mandatory in the new system, okay? But in the old legacy system from where you are actually migrating, it might not be. So what will happen is in the old legacy system, since the contact email is not mandatory, there will be blank fields in it, okay? So there would be numerous blank fields because it was not mandatory, but when you are migrating it from source system to the targeted system, since in the targeted system, it's mandatory, your migration process will fail because it will expect a value to be passed from the source system to the target system in terms of contact email. But since you don't have that value, since it was not mandatory in the source system, your data migration scripts will fail. And this will happen because you have not analyzed the data. You have not analyzed that contact email was mandatory, is mandatory in the new system, but it's blank in the old legacy system. And that is what I mean by data cleansing and data analysis, okay? So you need to understand, mines can be hidden in historical data. So maybe uh, currencies always change. Like uh, in Europe, there were different currencies previously, but it's not all converted to euros. So in the legacy system, it may be that there are different currencies present in the system, but what you have to do is identify that and convert them to euros because your new system will not accept all the currencies. Okay, and these are very practical examples that happen and that we have faced as well with a lot of our clients. So these are very practical examples which should be taken care of. And that is what I mean by data quality, analyzing data, data cleansing. So data cleansing is not just missing records, it's all about whether the records in the system are actually consistent, right? And they don't hamper your scripts when you 
migrate them from source system to target system. So data quality significantly influences effort, okay? Because in this case, like we said, contact email was not mandatory and we didn't analyze and we just ran the script. So it's a waste of effort for us and we will have to redo the thing by analyzing it, right? So data quality significantly influences effort. The further we go in history, the bigger mess we will discover, right? There may be so many changes that have happened in the new system, which are not present in the old legacy system. So it is very, very important to decide early in this stage how much history we want, okay? So if you are saying that we have got 100,000 records, it may be that when we talk to the business users, they say that we don't want all these 100,000 records. They don't make sense to us. We just want 30,000 records to be migrated. So by talking to the business, what has happened is your workload has just decreased by 70% because you don't have to migrate 100,000 records now. You just have to migrate 30,000 records. Okay. So the scope will, scope can reduce, uh, your efforts can reduce. If you involve business stakeholders, if you do proper analysis of both these systems, if you identify the data structures of both these systems and do your work smartly. So what we should do before doing any migration, very, very important, pre-migration data health check. When I say pre-migration data health check, you should do a data health check on both the source system and the target system. So in-depth data analysis, data cleansing, and understanding the legacy system is necessary for a smooth rollout. This is a mandatory step, pre-migration data health check. Make sure the project has time dedicated to remove unused, outdated, duplicate, and incorrect data at multiple stages. Okay, so this 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 is a must that we have to do, and we have seen that in the previous slide in terms of examples how it can impact your efforts. Now, one thing which we don't do is running tests. We think that. Uh, we can do the testing when we have migrated all the records, but testing has to be a regular process. So it's great to see your plan going how you imagined it, but when migrating data, choosing to stay on cloud nine that everything is working is a red flag, okay? Your data loader files may have run successfully, but you need to test. And why do you need to test? So because if you are testing, so testing should be on your critical path activity, right? So at every step you have to test and you have to identify who is going to test and evaluate data and sign off on the test results. So always make sure that you have someone who is testing your system continuously and giving you feedback because that feedback is important for you to move ahead. Okay. And improve your things and minimize your efforts. Once your migration is complete, repeat testing, okay? There will be issues detected. So keep a follow-up meetings with your stakeholders, fix those issues, ask them to test it again and ask for a feedback, right? So it should be a continuous testing process rather than one-time testing process, okay? And obviously goal five, pen down lessons learned and action plans to avoid repeating same mistakes, okay? If you have found issues, just make sure that you're not repeating those issues again and again, because data migration is not a one phase process. It is a several phases processes that has to be tested again and again in baby steps. I think this is the most common problems that we face. We don't review workflows. So what happens is when you are actually migrating, uh, if previous workflows or triggers are still active, then what may happen is you might end up sending unwanted emails to your members, okay? So it might be that you have got a trigger which just fires uh, email to your real customers. So make sure that you disable them. If you don't disable the active triggers, it might hamper the progress in migration, okay? So review your workflows, disable any active workflow before importing data, Otherwise, it will have bad consequences on your real-time customers, right? They may start receiving emails, which they might not, okay? And additionally, check in fast validation rules. 
demand any changes for further processes. So it's very, very important to review your workflows, review any kind of uncustomized work that you have done, right? Uh, make sure that it follows the new guidelines and then do it. Now, since data migration is often viewed as a one-time activity, but as we have seen, it's not a one-time activity, okay? It's divided in phases. So people think that uh, since it's a one-time activity, man manual migration will work. But since it's in phases, we need to automate those processes, okay? Because you may have to run data migration first on the layer staging environment, right? And that too in phases, and that would be a repetitive process, okay? And when there are repetitive processes, it is advisable to run automation on it. Otherwise, it would be a tedious task for you, okay? So automate migration, okay? If Because migration is split into multiple phases, right? At least there are three stages on which migration runs, right? First is a dry run that you will do uh, for the data migration, uh, maybe on a partial sandbox. Then it may be a full data validation that you might be doing on a full sandbox after doing your sandbox refresh. And then it would be the real production upload that you will do. So there are at least three phases that you have to do for data migration, right? And if you have there are if there are three stages, it's always good to automate it, right? So that same things can be repeated for these three phases or three waves. Okay. Otherwise, what will happen is you will write different scripts for uh, different migrations and run that manually, which will eff actually effort would be like three times or four times uh, if you don't automate your migration. Okay. And similarly for data quality, it's an iterative process. So make sure you have got maybe some kind of data cleansing dashboards uh, that are present there. Uh, which you can actually monitor regularly through your automation migration and see how much data has been cleaned and it is whether it is good to go or not okay so use automation migration tools there are a lot of tools available in the market which can automate your processes and automate your migration process because automation migration takes time right and it's done in multiple waves so automate every wave of it so that you save time on it so I think uh, uh, this brings us to the end of our webinar. There are many more pitfalls, again, uh, that you can actually avoid. But based on our experience, these are the seven pitfalls that you should be avoiding at every stage. Uh, OK. And uh, we at Ably Pro are actually uh, helping a lot of our financial post clients uh, in their data migration process and in other support activities. So if you have any questions, you can actually type in the question and answer box and I, be, I will try to answer them as much as possible. Let's see if we have any questions. And obviously this presentation uh, and the recording for this webinar will uh, be available to you and sent through email uh, and shared with you uh, after this webinar ends. Uh, and even if you don't have any questions right now, uh, you can always ask and send us an email at vcare at ablipro.com or maybe call us at 240-259-3076 and we will be able to answer your questions. So we give these regular webinars uh, to our uh, customers uh, regularly and to everyone so that we can educate them in the best practices and processes that should be followed for financial force, for sales force, and any other system. So I don't see any questions and answers here. So feel free to uh, let us know if you have any questions, and uh, we will answer that if you shoot us to us. And thank you again for attending this webinar. Uh, it was great uh, that you all attended it. And thank you so much. And we will see you in our next webinar. Thank you. Bye-bye.